Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is Tuesday, September 29th, 2020, and this is the Flight Sim News. So it looks like uh, Skunk Muff McFunk is at it again with another pretty cool video. Uh, this time it's F-14B. Simple INS and TACAN navigation guide for pilot and Rio. mode but if we come down to the mode selector and we click cruise we get a little compass but not much else still this is important to have up when you are in TACAN mode though so we'll come down to the VDI and have a look at this as you can see we have a solid triangle representing the current waypoint selected and a hollow triangle representing our current heading and all we need to do is line those two up to be able to be on course what we're going to do now is we're going to level out and we'll come down and take a look at the HSD. As you can see we have a range in miles on the top left and we have additional heading information represented here. We also have a representation of the head and tail of the aircraft. A Now the nice thing is, is he goes into detail and talks about what you got going on in the front seat but he also does the same thing in the back seat. Three, six, five, eight is our lat and enter. Then we want to go clear again, longitude, go northeast, and because we've only got two numbers for our longitude to start with, we want to start with a zero, then four one three five two four and enter. And as you can see we have a waypoint three that's popped up that we can use, but before we finish up we need to put in an altitude. I like to just put in 3000 so I go out and 3000 and then we go enter and that is locked in there and that's how easy it is to put in a new waypoint so let's move on to looking at TACAN okay let's take a look at TACAN now why would we use TACAN over a waypoint well let's take a look at our kneeboard and we can see we have a list of airfields with a corresponding number of frequencies we can use either of these frequencies to navigate to these airfields with a range and a bearing and in a similar way we can find a aircraft carrier or a tanker that are in the area as well so let's take a look at trying to find the tanker with 32 Yankee and what we'll do is come over to the left hand panel and first make sure we have command Overall, it's another really, really good video from this guy, and I'm starting to dig what Skunk McFunk has going on, man. Uh, I'll throw a link to this in the video description, and you can check it out for yourself. Ready. So the other day, I had mentioned that Baltic Dragon's going to be working on the Gamblers, which is an F-16C campaign uh, for the Syria map in DCS World. So, the latest thing from Baltic Dragon was yesterday, where he mentions that the open beta update broke some of the AI behavior in Mission 7 of the Raven 1 campaign. However, he has a file that you can download, which will basically replace that and fix that mission and just drop it in the campaign folder. Uh, I'd imagine eventually they'll probably release uh, an updated version into the open beta as well if, if you want to wait, but it is nice that he's thrown that in there. So here's something else I came upon that I thought was really good. So um, Baltic Dragon was interviewed on Casmo TV. And he goes on to say, Casmo, a former Kiowa and Apache pilot, has kindly invited me to talk about DCS mission building. I guess we also announced my first Hilo campaign to come. What? Oh, hey, how you doing? Very good, thank you. And you? Oh, not too bad. How so, it looks like these guys are going to collaborate together and create a campaign for DCS. And it's going to be a helicopter campaign. Talk about cool. How's your day? Uh, busy. Busy? But it's over. I mean, here it's, what, 10 o'clock p.m., so... Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, it's only uh, 4 p.m. here, so... I need to figure out how they do that. That's well, pretty that's cool. That's the day to deal with the kids. Uh, exactly. How many do you have? Uh, four. 10 and 14. Okay, so I'm, I'm building... All right, so they just jump right into bullshitting together and throwing it right out there. There's nice tracers coming up. So th that kind of thing. Right, okay. Yeah, because that's a trick, and, and I want to talk about the AI, but, you know, even when I've kind of built just little scenarios, is 
you know, I'll put something down to have the effect of shooting, and then they won't shoot. So, yeah. so you've basically worked around that, and and in some ways forced them. I got to figure out how he does this, though. That does look pretty cool. Uh, I think a little bit of video in the background might have made it a little more interesting, but but it's really more about what they're talking about more than anything. And uh, it's a fantastic interview. It's only about 34 minutes long, so it's not super long. But the cool thing is, is these guys are going to work together and create a campaign for the Kiowa when it comes out for DCS World. So that's fantastic news, man. Um, I'll keep an eye on what these guys have going on to give you more information about it. But until then, check out the interview because it's it's awesome. Posted Saturday and it's only got 341 views so far. So head on over there and uh, give Casmo some love and uh, check out his channel. He has fantastic stuff. I absolutely love the stuff this guy does, man. Uh, and I didn't know he was also a former Apache pilot. That's pretty cool. Maybe I should get with him and do an interview on my channel. Hey, Casmo, reach out to me, man. Let's get something rolling. I think that would be pretty fun. But anyways, I'll throw a link to this in the video description, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, this is a few days old, but I didn't cover it yet in the news. So the September 24th, 2020 development update was posted for Microsoft's Flight Simulator. Today we're happy and proud to announce World Update 1 Japan at the Tokyo Game Show 2020. Looks like there's an update to the SDK. Uh, Third-party developers, applications to our Marketplace Partner Program have now passed 1,000, which is astonishing. Every day we see new announcements of new airports, af aircraft, and other useful tools and add-ons being announced, and we are over the moon to see the level of creativity and quality coming to the platform. Last week we launched four all-new products in the InSim Marketplace. Personally, I'd like to see more free stuff for this, to be honest. Uh, I have to start figuring out where I can find that, because I know there's a bunch of free planes out there. Uh, the F-18 was kind of crap that I found, though. So if you guys know of any cool military planes that have a reasonable G-tolerance, you know, something I can kind of fly by the seat of my pants and have fun and actually fly fast and not have that blank screen show up and tell me that I've wrecked, that I can't see happening, uh, I would love to know about it. So, the feedback snapshot goes in and talks about the forum feedback top bugs, and they're listed between 1 and 20. So, all of the different bugs are mentioned here, and I like that they go at the end and go, work in progress, fixed in update 3, under investigation, improved in update 2, fixed in update 3. So, they're telling you what's going on, they're, they're looking at these bugs and and issues that they're having in there and they're actually addressing them and that's pretty freaking cool I would love to see uh, Eagle Dynamics uh, do something like this and you know actually address some of the things we know is going on in a more direct manner like this I think this is pretty cool alright and underneath of that they've got top wishes Upvoting for removing press any key to start. Yes, thank you. That would be the most awesome thing to get rid of. Uh, fly by wire community mod A320. Uh, scenery gateway system. Replay function missing. Uh, DirectX 12. Open up the weather system to third party devs. Freeware category for the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. You know what? That's exactly what I was just talking about. That should be like at number two, right up there with press any key to start. Because I get it, I know they want to make money, but at the same time they need to add that free stuff to the marketplace because I hate going online, searching around for stuff, and then getting screwed around by, you know, some shady website. Like the F-18 thing, that was kind of a nightmare. I thought I was going to get like a virus from that because everywhere I was going it was like click this do that click this do that and it was way too many steps just to download something somebody made uh, they definitely need to do something like that for the freeware stuff and then the development roadmap itself uh, goes into a little bit of detail down here and tells you basically where we at now okay September 24th world update 1 Japan update 3 and then what they're going to do October 1st, October 15th, they plan for Update 4. October 29th, they're planning for Update 5. 
So it's pretty cool that they're going into detail and giving us all this information. So if you want to know what's going on with Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, this little development update is pretty cool. And then they go and talking about four new products that they've added to the store. So you can get a couple new airports and a new plane. Uh, I want to see more of the freeware stuff is what I'm looking for. And then here's some screenshots of Japan, which look fantastic. I'm going to have to jump in here again and give it a shot. I haven't flown this in a while. But anyways, I'll throw a link to this in the video description and you can check it out for yourself. Right. This was posted uh, last week as well by uh, Dry Dock Dream Games. And uh, these are the guys that are doing Task Force Admiral. And this is their September 2020 development update and that is the new Microsoft game that's coming out. Uh, they go on to talk about what we've been busy with during this summer. looks like a Yorktown okay and then mapping the world looks like there's a YouTube video here uh, mapping the world of Task Force Admiral in 3D it's not a super long video and then a dev update on the barebone prototype air ops manager and then over the last few months, we've started to post regularly on our Steam page and Discord channel, in addition to Twitter, Facebook, and Billy Billy. What the hell is Billy Billy? I've never heard of it. Is this like that TikTok thing? <laughs> it is now kind of hard to miss us, but who knows? That might still happen. At any rate, don't forget to check back regularly over there if you want your weekly fix. So far, we have never failed to deliver. Uh, and it's a pretty long page here, and it goes into detail about a lot of the ship 3D models, and uh, it looks pretty cool, I have to admit. You know, I've never been one to do, um, I don't know, something that isn't a real-time strategy game, but this is looking to be pretty kick-ass. And I like that, like, you know, you could see the planes in 3D doing their thing very very cool stuff I'll throw a link to this page in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself All right next up iron bombing tips and tricks part two from friend of the channel Ian Christie afternoon YouTube sidekick here today I'm in my Harrier but once again approaching the part of the world I like to call the trench this is familiar territory for the Skyhawk but today we're here in the Harrier for part two of our iron bombs tips and tricks if you haven't watched part one of the series, you probably should go back and do that. In that video, we started out in the Skyhawk, flying a mission to take out bridges using iron bombs and iron sights. And we discovered that although it can be done, it's pretty challenging, resulting in explosion. Uh, obviously, this meant finding a way to effectively throw a bomb a long way without having to gain a lot of altitude to do it. Um, essentially, the idea is that we'll approach the target at low level, We'll line up on it, and then at the right time, we'll pull up into a shallow dive and release the bombs. The forward and upward momentum imparted to the bombs will throw them forward to the target while we break away and depart. Now, when you're delivering nuclear bombs, pinpoint accuracy is not a big consideration, so the technique basically involved aiming in the general direction of the target and flying a very precise trajectory. Once again, it's another awesome video for me, and I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. So here's something I found over on Hoggett that I thought was pretty freaking cool. So somebody has taken an Xbox One controller and made it a HOTAS device somehow. It looks like it has something to do with 3D printing, too. Now, I don't know why you'd want to do this with an Xbox controller, but maybe it works well. I don't know. It looks pretty cool. And then check this out. He busts out some parts and makes a throttle device. Bunch of clicking. It looks pretty smooth, though. Kind of cute, isn't it? It 
it's like a baby Hotas, right? I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, and lastly, here's a video I saw that popped up and was really interesting. The guy goes and shows you from the lenses of the Quest 2, the Reverb G2, and the Index, all with looking at a cockpit in DCS world. Hey, they here, so welcome to the Viatech channel, welcome back to the True Lenses series, the series where we stick a camera in front of the lenses of our VR headsets to see which one is the best, which one is the right for you. And yes, we are doing another one because you guys ask constantly since the Quest 2 review to compare it with the HP Reverb G2, the headset with the highest resolution on the market right now. And it's actually quite insane, the fact that I'm probably the only person in the entire world with both the Quest 2 and the Reverb G2. Shoot. So, well, yeah, let's make it. In this video, we're gonna compare the coming Oculus Quest 2 with the resolution of a 1832 by 1920 with an LCD display with RGB pixel arrangement running up to 90 Hz. By the way, more about that in a few. And the also upcoming HP Reverb G2 with a resolution of 2160 by 2160 each eye RGB pixel arrangement LCD display running in 90 Hz. And the only one that you can have already in your hands, the Valve Index with a resolution of 1440 by 1600 LCD display with RGB pixel arrangement running up to 144 Hertz. Now comparing these three headsets is a little weird because on the side we have the Quest 2 that is a standalone headset so it doesn't even need the PC most of the time. Well, yeah, well in this video we are using Link of course to this. These three lined up like this really kind of give you a better idea of what this stuff is going to look like. At least from the lens. None of them really look terrible by any means. Here's what we're looking for though. I wish they would have thrown the Rift S in there to get an idea what that looks like, but the the Reverb G2 looks pretty insanely awesome. Much clearer, a lot more depth to the color. Quest looks kind of washed out if you ask me. The blacks are blacker, it seems, on the Reverb G2 and everything's a lot clearer. Although you're talking about a, a, a resolution of 2160 by 2160, which is like, that's more than 4K. But again, I don't think any of these look bad by any means. I think actually all three of them look better than my Rift S already. I think the real question is going to be, how do these things actually perform is what I want to know. I mean, it's all well and good that it looks nice, but if it looks nice like this and only goes 20 frames per second, then, you know, what's the point? I'll throw a link to the entire video in the video description for you to check it out for yourself, but uh, it looks pretty promising. Uh, my only thing is, is I don't know what it's going to take to run those things. You know, it, it's, it's already... DCS already has a hard time running... DCS on a Rift S, which, you know, has resolution that, like, is nothing like those. It's much lower. So my question is, what is it really going to take to push those things? That's what I want to know. And we're not going to see that, and nobody's going to give us that review until these things come out, because nobody's talking about that yet that I've seen so far. Everybody's, you know, eager to uh, show us what it looks like, but nobody's telling us yet what it performs like or what kind of machine you need to get fantastic performance out of it. Everybody's just going, hey, it looks like this, it looks great. That's fantastic. But if it looks like that and it only goes 20 frames per second uh, with a high-end system like I have, they can keep it. So that's where I'm at with it, guys. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time, guys.